Hi, my name is Melody, and I'll be reading a prayer for Owen Meany for an honor of band post week. This is my selected passage. Toronto, April 12, 1987, a rainy Palm Sunday. It is not a warm spring rain, not a seasonal rain, as my grandmother liked to say. It is a raw, cold rain, a suitable day for the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. At Grace Church on the hill, the children and the acolytes stood huddled in the narthex, holding their palm fronds. They resembled tourists who landed in the tropics on an unseasonably cold day. The organist chose Brahms for the processional. O welt ich muss dich lassen, O world I must leave you. Owen hated Palm Sunday, the treachery of Judas, the cowardice of Peter, and the weakness of Pilate. It's bad enough that they crucified him, Owen said, but they made fun of him too. Canon McKen. Mickey, sorry, read happily from Matthew, how they mocked Jesus, how they spit on him, how he cried, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I find that Holy Week is draining. No matter how many times I have lived through his crucifixion, my anxiety about his resurrection is undiminished. I am terrified that this year it won't happen. That, that year, it didn't. Anyone can be sentimental about the nativity. Any folk can feel like a Christian at, Christ at Christmas. Easter is the main event. If you don't believe in the resurrection, you're not a believer. If you don't believe in Easter, Owen Meany said, don't kid yourself. Don't call yourself a Christian. For the Palm Sunday recessional, the organist chose the usual hallelujahs. In a chilling drizzle, I crossed Russell Hill Road and went in the service entrance of the Bishop Strachan School. I passed through the kitchen where the working women and the boarders, whose turn it was to help with the Sunday meal, all spoke to me. The head mistress, the Reverend, Mrs. Catherine Keeley sat in a usual head of table position among the house mothers, about 40 boarders, the poor girls who had no local friends to ask them home for the weekend, and the girls who were happy to stay at school sat around the other tables. It is always a surprise to me to see the girls not in their uniforms. I know it's a great relief to them to wear their uniforms day in, day out, because they don't have to worry about what to wear, but they're so lazy about how they wear their uniforms. They don't have much experience in dressing themselves, but when they have a choice, when they're allowed to wear their own clothes, they appear wholly less sophisticated, less worldly, than they appear in their uniforms. In the 20 years that I've been a teacher at the Bishop Strachan School, the girls' uniforms haven't changed very significantly. I've grown rather fond of them. If I were a girl of any age, I would wear a mini, a loosely tied necktie, a blazer with my school crest, knee socks, which the Canadians used to call knee highs, and a pleated skirt. When they kneel, it used to be the rule of the skirt should touch the floor. But for the Sunday boarders' lunch, the girls wear their own clothes. Some of them are so badly dressed. I fail to recognize them. They make fun of me for that, naturally. Some of them dress like boys, others like their mothers, or like the floozies they see in movies or on TV. As I am routinely the only man in the dining room for Sunday boarders' lunch, perhaps they dress for me.